Today, I'm going to be showing you how to put together the most affordable breeding or grow out tank you will ever lay your eyes on. I did all of this for only $30. So let's just get right into it here. I have a bucket of mixed moss and subwasu tanks, some java fern and anubias, some dragonstone and chola wood, and finally a couple of sponge filters. Almost everything you see here is available at my hobby shop, bobmoss.shop. Before we put together the tank, it's a good idea to attach these rhizome plants to some of the hardscape, otherwise they'll just float around the tank like they were duckweed. Starting with the java fern and a piece of chola wood, an aquarium life hack is to just slide the rhizome into the already existing holes in the chola wood. No need for any gross super glue or ugly looking fishing line. It will just grow in place and the roots will eventually just attach themselves. You can do this with other hardscape that has similar holes or depressions. Dragonstone is another great one if the holes are big enough. I'll do that for a couple more of these java ferns, but I also need to spice up this dragonstone a little bit. While I could try to slide the rhizome into these holes here like I mentioned, it's probably best just to use some fishing line in this situation to attach it more securely. So just take your fishing line, wrap it around, and tie yourself a nice little knot. Rinse and repeat until you're out of plants to attach, I guess. Do what you want here. Have some fun. On to the tub. I grabbed this one from Costco here in Canada for $13. Just so you are aware, these are number five plastic. If searching on your own, you're going to want to make sure this is a food grade plastic. Ideally, you're looking for number two plastic. This is high density polyethylene or HDPE. This is the most stable and inert plastic of the bunch. If you cannot find this, number four and number five plastics are acceptable as well, but may leach microplastics over long time spans. Number four is low density polyethylene and number five is polypropylene. Completely avoid number one plastics as they are for single use containers like water bottles and will leach microplastics and chemicals over shorter time spans, potentially harming your fish or shrimp. If you're gonna listen to one thing, listen to this. My one big piece of advice if using a darker plastic tub like this is to add in some lighter substrate on the bottom so you can actually see what's happening in the water. If you're using a light colored tub or a clear plastic tub, you may not even need a substrate at all depending on what plants you wanna grow. You just want some contrast, so use your best judgment. I trust you, you're smart enough, right? Now, I added a thin layer of crushed coral just because I had it laying around and I didn't wanna buy anything else for these tubs. They are my budget tanks after all. The downside here is that over time, this will slowly increase the TDS of my water, so I'll have to keep an eye on this tank's KH, GH, and PH. But for you guys at home, any type of sand or gravel will do, really. If you want to use your tubs to grow root feeding plants, make sure to plant accordingly with the proper aqua soil or root tabs. I am not responsible for you killing your plants. As you saw, I am only growing rhizome feeders and moss, so I don't have to worry. Now let's get the water in because that's going to take a while. Add some prime to our tap water and start the siphon. While that is filling, now is a great time to add in those pieces of hardscape we attached plants to earlier. If this was a lower water volume or a display tank, I would have done this before adding any water water at all but because it's nearly 30 gallons I want to get it started so it ends sooner. I add in my chola wood with the plants which I actually did not boil or pre-soak very much so I will need to weigh it down with some rocks here until it becomes waterlogged and sinks on its own. Off camera I attach some of the moss and some washer tanks to some other pieces of wood and rock just with the fishing line. I have tried doing the same thing with moss as with the rhizome feeders that is stuffing it into the holes and it doesn't quite work the same for the moss because it really wants to float away until it naturally attaches itself somewhere over time so to help it along we just tie it down a little. Finally the loose moss this will float around the tank attach itself to different things and if i'm lucky i might even get a little moss wall like i did in my other grow out tub finally i'll add some fish food here to start the cycling process this is what we call ghost feeding i'm just going to allow the food to rot in the tank creating an ammonia source and helping to grow the beneficial bacteria needed for the nitrogen cycle now that the tub is filled with water i'll just add some sponge filters here attach them to the pump via airline and then we wait four to six weeks later all right the tank is cycled and now for the final touch adding in some shrimp i have some here that i removed from my other tanks. This will probably just become a mixed call tank over time as I move plants back and forth between tubs so I'm not going to worry too much about color purity. Some people may want to have specific tubs for certain color calls but I just sell these as mixed calls for $2 Canadian anyway and most people don't seem to care. You can also toss in almost any type of fish in here you would like to breed as it is a great volume for that. For most fish you will probably want to keep the lids on the tubs to prevent them from jumping out which means attaching your lights inside them. You can do this pretty easily with a drill and some zip ties. For now I'm just going to take an extra light I have that I'm not using and toss it across both these bad boys. Oh yeah, while the first tub was cycling, I also set up this other tub basically the exact same way, so I figured there's no reason to make the same video twice. This one will be more for moss and some washer tank for now until I get more varieties of plants. These tubs will now allow me to have more fun growing tons of plants for the channel and my shop. I currently have 10 kinds of plants listed at bobmoss.shop and I'm hoping with these tubs to potentially double that. Make sure to subscribe to find out what I will be growing in these this summer. We can't forget the floating plants that happen to find their way in here 
plant that is, of course, duckweed. I like to use these tubs to grow my frog pit because they allow the roots to grow nice and long, but duckweed finds a way, as we all know. I'm not that angry anymore. It is a great base for homemade shrimp foods, after all. Another great thing to add to any aquarium, in my opinion, is some Indian almond leaves. These have antibacterial properties, and the tannins are beneficial to lots of aquarium creatures. Because I'm focused on shrimp, I also like to add Montmoronite or Bentonite clay. This is a volcanic ash that has tons of beneficial vitamins and minerals. I also like to add some type of powdered food to my water column. This can be anything from bee pollen or spirulina powder like I use to more bacterial supplements like Bacter AE. As with all my tanks, I do have some snails in here that happen to tag along with all those plants I moved over during setup, so I don't have to worry about that. I love snails, by the way. They are great at keeping the tank clean from algae while creating some beneficial ways for our shrimps to pick through. If you are fish breeding, you don't really need to add much. Just make sure you keep that lid on to prevent any high jumpers from setting a new world record. Stay tuned until the very end of this video as I pray I don't break my phone trying some experimental footage. Having tanks this big for plants to grow and fish or shrimp breeding allows you to have a much higher sales volume compared to having expensive glass aquariums. Those are great for viewing and are much easier to call out of compared to having to go top down into these tubs, but you cannot beat this value. Almost 30 gallons for only $30. What a steal. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below your cheapest aquarium setup, and remember guys, until next time, keep your shrimp hands strong. Big thanks to my YouTube channel members, Tater Salad, Roman Pitchop, BJ Palmer, Aaron's Water Buddies, Lucas Talbot, Gone Trippet, Amanda Curry, Daniel Cordon, Jake FWTX, Jamie A3DRC, Mitch Bottom, Robert Redman, Crip Creeper Aquatics, Zodiac246, and Kendra Crippen. If you would like a shout out as well as other perks, all my support links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Having trouble finding those aquarium supplies you need? Oh, no. Is a local fish store overcharging you for subpar <laughs> products? Or even worse, maybe you're forced to shop at PetSmart. <laughs> Fret no more, my friends. At BobMoss.shop, I guarantee the best selection and lowest prices of everything I could actually get through customs. Use the link in the description and be sure to enter the code YouTube15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Live shrimp shipped within Canada only. Dry goods and plants can be shipped within the continental United States. Worldwide shipping on all dry goods. Okay, so my brilliant idea is to get like first person footage into the tank. The phone is supposed to be waterproof, so fingers crossed that it's actually waterproof. I know this isn't like as jumpy or as cut as that, but uh, I need to make the video eight minutes. So let's get some cool underwater footage. Let's go. All right, I did make some changes to the tank since like I, I did the video, but that's not too big of a deal. It's all the same. It's just a tank, okay? Fingers crossed if, if this breaks, I guess this part won't be in the video, but uh, let's see how it goes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Does my phone still work? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs>